much. Now to ITMA, where an Indianapolis abortion doctor is fighting back against the state's attorney general. She wants Todd Rokita to stop what she calls defamatory statements surrounding the case of a 10-year-old rape victim who came to Indiana for an abortion. ITMA's Jasmine Miner tracking all of it for us this evening. Jasmine. Well, Phil, I can tell you the cease and desist comes after Rakita publicly said Dr. Bernard could lose her license to practice. However, the termination of pregnancy report clearly shows the doctor followed the letter of the law in conducting this abortion. Caitlin Bernard's attorney released this letter late Friday afternoon, demanding that Attorney General Todd Rakita stop making what she calls false and defamatory statements about the doctor. Rakita publicly announced this week he was investigating Bernard for possible criminal and professional violations. Bernard performed an abortion on a 10-year-old rape victim from Ohio, then shared the story publicly. But IT Maid has obtained the termination of pregnancy report, which shows Bernard filed it within the timeline established by Indiana law. IU Health also announced Friday morning that Bernard was in compliance with privacy laws in the case. Until the Indiana legislature acts, abortion is legal up to 20 weeks in the state. And so she was well under that limit at six weeks and three days. And so there are no disciplinary actions that can be taken against her at that time. Being an abortion provider in Indiana is not a crime. IU professor of law Jody Madeira says Dr. Caitlin Bernard acted within the law by performing the abortion. He has caused a great deal of public anger at this one individual. And so I think that a defamation suit might be possible. Bernard's attorney also hinted at legal action against the attorney general, writing to the extent that any statement you make exceeds the general scope of your authority as Indiana's attorney general. Such a statement forms the basis of an actionable defamation claim. Well, we just got this into our newsroom. Bernard's attorney also warned Rakita that his statements could incite harassment or violence against the doctor. Now, IT mate reached out to the attorney general's office this afternoon. A Rakita spokesperson tells us they will review the letter when it arrives, but that regardless, no false or misleading statements have been made. I'm Jasmine Miner for Wish TV, IT mate. Jasmine, thank you very much. Well, the libertarian uh, candidate for U.S. Senate in Indiana says the state should not ban abortion. James Seniak tells me on all Indiana politics that abortion bans simply just don't work. I am a pro-life candidate, but I believe there's other ways we can reduce abortion through social issues and through economic issues as well. And really, if we want to get to the heart of the issue when it comes to abortion, I believe that um, a ban simply will not save as many lives as addressing the heart of it. CNEC also told me that he believes politicians shouldn't be acting like physicians. You can see my full interview on All Indiana Politics Sunday morning at 930 right here on Wish TV. Well, the U.S. House voted to restore abortion access nationwide. It's the first response by the legislature since the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade last month. The Women's Health Protection Act passed by just nine votes, 219 to 210. It would codify abortion rights into federal law. They also passed another bill that would protect women from getting punished for going to another state to get an abortion. That passed 223 to 205. All seven of Indiana's GOP representatives voted against the measure, while both Democrats voted for them. Neither measure ex is expected to advance in the Senate, where they would need at least 60 votes to pass.